So, uh, if you have a question, uh, let, uh, now you can unmute your phone if you have a question, so that you can ask your question. If you have a question, unmute your phone and ask your question quickly. I can't hear you, ma. Is somebody asking a question? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
Because a lot of people have anxiety, they don't know that they have anxiety. They're working, some of them, they can even, in that kind of God, some can have a position, some can be in a top place, and they have anxiety, but they don't know. But how do you know you have anxiety? Okay, the answer is that you, if, if you have anxiety, you will experience one of these symptoms. These are the symptoms that you will experience. Stress. When you are stressed off, anxiety is what makes you stressed off. You stress off. Now, have you ever considered people that are doing three, four jobs at a time, but they don't have time for family, they don't have time for friends, they don't have time for church? Anxiety could be the cause. Because they were pursuing something that made them to begin to experience stress. Now, how will a family be balanced when you go to work for a week, you don't come home from one job to another, you only sleep in the car, you have a hassle, but you can't come home because from one job to another. And then, after month, mortgage, car loan, uh, this and that, you don't even have time for God. And then you call yourself a child of God, that's a problem. You have a problem, but necessary stress. The funny thing that under any stress creates a problem that you're going to have there. So if you are listening to me now, and you are stressed, it's anxiety that causes it. Okay? So a stress that is out of proportion is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking somebody working a job or working through job, but you have time for your family, you have time for church, you can still control yourself. And control your temper. And some working through jail, their job is that they go there. Some of them don't be on the screen. Some of them is just to talk. Some of them it's not a stressful job. So those kind of people can have time for their family. They will come home. They will sleep. They will play with their kid and, and stuff like that. Now some people working seven days a week, no off. No off at all. On Sunday, Saturday, Monday, they walk and walk and walk. Now, how much have you said? That's the, that the point. How much have you said since you've been working? Is your life better than somebody that's working one job and rest on God? Or somebody that is working one and a half job and rest on God? Or somebody that is working two jobs and rest on God? Uh, think about it. So, unnecessary stress, out of proportion, is anxiety. So, you have anxiety if you have that symptom. For example, let me tell you another thing, just a scenario. When you hear somebody talk to you, they talk down on you, and we know we have a lot of bullies all over the world right now. Some people can look at you and say, you are a dollar. You are, you are a dollar. You are just a dollar. You don't know anything. Or they look at you and say, you are a poor man. A poor man, shut up your mouth. When Rich people are talking. You shut up your mouth. You are very, very poor. Now people can get to, they can, they can have a smelly attitude like that. They can talk you down and bully you. But you, you will know you have anxiety when you started crying because somebody called you a dollar. An adult. You wake up in the middle of the night and you remember somebody called you a dollar that you are dull. Or you are poor, and then you begin to cry. You begin to say, Oh Lord, my God, hey, 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 God, am I really a dollar? Hey, God, am I really, am I really poor? Then you have anxiety. That is, it is the spirit of anxiety that is going to make you to begin to remember, begin to act, you know, strange. Something that other when other people see it, when you tell them the reason why you are crying, some of them will say, okay, that's not supposed to be a problem. Then you have anxiety. So instead of you to pray to God for knowledge, if you are really dull, for wisdom and understanding or power to start continue if you are a lazy person, maybe you are you, you are lazy because it might be true that because of your poverty, you is because you 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 are lazy. You can't walk. When you see work, you begin to run for work. Two hours work. Your big. They ask you to. You walk in security. In the next uh, thirty or forty minutes, your leg begin to shake. You know you are not sick. Oh, it's not that you sick. Oh, but because you are lazy, your 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 leg begin to shake. And on the the, the following morning, they have go to the security. They say, ah, 
I can't go, the job is too difficult. And when you go to where you're going to sit down, sit down, you sit down, you say, this sit down, it does too much, or this, I sit down, I say, oh, I can't go, there is a problem with you. Maybe the person is telling you the truth, but doesn't know how to present it. You don't need to cry, you don't need to think about it, check if it is true, call upon God, and be diligent. In your business, somebody that is dedicated in his business is going to sit before kings and not men. men. So, so, pray that God should enlighten your darkness. And this is going to come when you genuinely give your life to Jesus. This manner is going to be taught when you begin to read the scripture, the fruit of the spirit. It is to be kind, to be patient, to be temperate, long suffering. Love, love, love will take over when somebody tell you that you are dollar. You just laugh and smile because you are not dull. God will say you can tell me that God made the foolish thing to confuse the wise, to confirm the wise, the wise man. So those, the word of God is there for you to use. You are not dull. And, uh, you know, you begin to do things that is going to be creative. So you impact your life positively. You you know you begin to fruitful. You know begin to do your still worship rightly. Begin to tithe your revenue. Those are the things that can bring you out of poverty. It's not enough for you to be crying and begin to and begin to be sad because somebody tell you that you are poor. But rather you should confess and you know and you know you know you know. You know, and, and has God to help you. If that statement is true or it's not true, I don't know how it applied to you, but don't think about it instead of you going to action. Don't think about it anymore, what people say or what they don't say. Just let the word of God impact you for better. And I pray the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you know, you know, uh, you know. When you don't have ability, you know, to set aside a worry, you have anxiety. That, 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 those are the symptoms that you're going to see that you know that you have anxiety. So, uh, you know, when, when, you know, when, uh, when you, when you, when, when, when you are restless, you are, you are, you, you are, you are restless, you have anxiety. When, you know, when all these symptoms is happening in your behavior, maybe irritability, everything just irritates you, or restlessness, you know, you know, these are normal behavior for those people that have anxiety. So, uh, you, 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 you know, you, you begin to pray about it and say, God, everything that doesn't make me to to have rest, everything that 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 make me, you know, uh, you know, you know, to be on ease, that make me to, you know, to be crying in the night, to be crying in the morning, to to, you know, to have bitterness in my that I don't, con I can't control my my worry. You know, those those are the spirits of anxiety, and the same storm that's going to be happening in your life. So you 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 know. Uh, you know, and these are these 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 are diseases, and and they can become excessive if you if you don't if if, if you don't careful, and they can consume you. You know, they will interfere into your daily life. You begin to see that you are restless, you are not normal. Everything irritates you. You will be agitated, and. And, you know, to the extent that every day, people that are around you can tell that something is not right about you. You begin to have lack of concentration. You are not concentrating in your job. When you get to your job, your body says, what is wrong with you? Because you can't concentrate. You begin to have, a, you, know, you know, a racing thought. Oh, can I press in my salary? A racing thought that if I do it this way, if I do it that way, if I do it, can can I get another result? Try, uh, remember that it is somebody that tell you that you have dollar or that you are poor. 
And then you begin to you begin to think about that word. You begin to turn it into different way. Be careful. That is spirit of anxiety. It will not have a place in your heart in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Or you begin to exercise unwanted, you know, uh, thoughts in your heart. Those are the things that, that make you know that you have the spirit of anxiety. When you begin to feel fatigue and all you begin to sweat unnecessarily, you have anxiety. Okay? So my daily beloved, I don't want you to exercise all those attributes. Don't have a senseless worry. Don't have a sensitive worry. It will lead you to fear. And you begin to feel of impending doom that is imminent, that is coming to you. The danger of it is that when you begin to explain this thing, it can lead to insomnia. It's a sickness, nausea, and uh, palpitation. And then you can you can tremble. You can just fall when you are walking. Uh, I heard about one woman, she just get to work, she get to work, they, were, they, I don't, they, they said she was, no, she was working 16 hours per day, I mean, some, uh, some years back in Bowie, she just packed and had the right, she could not, she just died there, she could not wait, because she was stressed herself, I don't know what is pursuing her, be careful, the Almighty God will help you and me, that we don't allow this spirit of anxiety, and pursue this war, and and, and, and regret in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That is why Amen. you should not give room for anxiety in your heart and in your life because it is very, very bad. That spirit is bad. That spirit is bad. Psalm 55:22. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, Cast your burden on the Lord and it shall sustain you. It shall never permit the righteous to be moved. You know, New Living Translation, give your body to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Somebody talk to you. Say, God, I'm not the one to talk to you. To, it is you. It is you in me. Because Christ lives in you. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So, give your body to the Lord. And He will take care of you. When you give your body to the Lord, the Word of God says, we will take care of you. It will not permit the godly, the godly, not ungodly, it will not permit the ungodly to sleep and fall. You will not sleep and fall in Jesus' name. Amen. The second question, the second question, can anxiety leave you? And the answer is yes. Anxiety will leave you. The third question, if it can leave, how can it leave? If anxiety wants to leave, how can it leave? The answer is that put your trust in God. It is God that will help you. First, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and partner Savior. And partner Savior. Begin to study the scripture so that you can know the mind of God for your life. What you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. Do exactly as God's word told you. What God prescribed for you in the scripture, do exactly that in his word. And anxiety will move from your life. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Study this book of instruction continually. Study to show yourself, uh, you know, uh, this book of the Lord shall not depart from you. So I'm reading New Living Translation. Study this book of instruction continually. So the Bible is an instruction. It's a book of instruction for you to know what God wants you to do. And instruction for you as a child of God. Meditate on each day and night. Whenever you have time in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, in that time, meditate on it. So, you will be sure to obey everything written in there. That is the only way that anxiety will leave you. Because the stubborn spirit. Meditate on the word of God. What does it have me to do? Then obey what is written there. Only then, it is only then you will, you know, it's only then 
will you prosper and succeed in all you do? If God asks you to do something, do it. Because the word of God is a mirror that shows you exactly how you're going to be. If you read the word of God and apply it to your life, the word is going to be written in your life and people around you will see it. The, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not afraid or discourage. Do not afraid to do what God said you should do, no matter how tough or simple it, is, it might be. Don't be discouraged. Be strong. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God is with you. He's reciting with you wherever you go. So that applies to you and me, my brother, my sister. Matthew chapter 11, 28 and 29. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry everybody. Come unto me. You that are weary and carry everybody. You know, that worry make you worry. And is that everybody upon you? And I will give you rest. Christ said, I will give you rest. So when you accept Jesus Christ in your life, is a way for the uh, anxiety to leave you. Take my yoke upon you and let me teach you. I can teach you. That is what this Christ said. Because I am humble and gentle in heart, and you will find rest to my soul. So when you begin to read the scripture, that will help you. So be able to resist the devil because it will flee. Anxiety is a devil object. That is why the Bible asks us to detest it in our life. Come unto me, all you that labor and every last day, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and then you will find rest unto your soul. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our time is fast spent. I still have three more questions that I need to answer, but I'm going to stop. Next week, I'm going to answer that question. Somebody ask, so that, let me tell you that question now, so that uh, you don't ask that question if you want to ask, if, if you wish to ask that question. Amen. Amen. How can anxiety show itself in our life? And then, if I have, you know, I have, if I have a friend with anxiety, how can I help them? And what is the difference between a fear of the future and anxiety? So, you two are supposed to have a question that you're supposed to write. If you know that this lesson bless you, let us, it may not be necessary for you, but to help other people that this thing, you know, is have you know that you know that have this or it might be you also it doesn't really matter we want to look at the scripture to see what the bible asks us to do i pray the almighty god we bring into this our teaching in the name of the lord jesus christ let us cultivate about study the world and uh, do what it asks us to do because that is going to be where our freedom and truth deliverance is after we have given our life to Jesus Christ, it is this word that we suppose to take as our friend because it's the mirror that God has given unto us an instruction whereby if we live our life by it, we will never have regret and there is a promise of heaven for you at the end of this earth. Paul said, if I live, I live for Christ. If I die as a child of God, it's a gain. But anyone that dies without no Christ, that person will have himself to blame because he will rot in hell. You shall not rot in hell in Jesus' name. Amen. And anxiety, if it's not careful, it leads people to hell. Because Jesus Christ already said that in latter day, he said a lot of people, they will depart from the faith. They will begin to look for the doctrine of the devil. And I pray you and me, we shall not depart from the faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you ask me what happened to Judas Iscariot, it's because they allowed anxiety. He was a thief. He was thief 
he was stealing from the pots. And he stole, he, you know, he took 30 pieces of silver to, you know, to, to sell his master. He sold Christ for 30 pieces of silver. That money could not spend it. He, he returned the money when Jesus Christ released himself to them, but it was too late. Do we remember that he had himself before Jesus Christ, you know, died on the cross of Calvary? That was why he doesn't have a chance to repent again. Had he been as wait to, you know, to, to ask for forgiveness, God would have, Christ would have forgiven and forgive uh, Peter. But he couldn't wait because the devil that is a, is a, is a, uh, the devil that is a killer, the devil that is a liar, already cheated uh, his chariot. And we know he didn't allow his chariot to, you know, to, he didn't allow his chariot to, uh, to wait until Christ died. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus every power that will not allow you to succeed. That will not allow you to make heaven. Holy Ghost fire will consume them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us 